for our agenda. Okay, let's start. Great. Welcome, everyone. It's Doc's office hours, and we are being recorded. Please remember, we have the Jenkins Community Code of Conduct. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and let's take a look at the agenda and put things onto it that we need. Okay, so all I had put for today was question and answer. Uh, Oleg and I went through a series of questions and answers this morning in, oh no, yesterday morning in Doc's Office Hours Europe time. And what we did is we put the answers into the notes here so we can review those and be sure that the questions we had on Monday are adequately addressed here. So that was the, that was the topic that I had was be sure that we follow up on the 29 June questions. Are there any other topics you would like to include, uh, Jonathan? No one at the moment, not. Okay, so let's, let's walk through the questions and be sure that we've got a, a combined understanding. So what, let's see, we, I confirmed with Oleg and he, I talked in more depth about Community Bridge and Community Bridge very much is on his mind and he's actively seeking funding to do, in addition to Google Season of Docs, a Community Bridge project. Now, one of his concerns is that we've got to be sure we have enough mentors in the, in the Jenkins community to ready to support a Community Bridge writer. So, so that's, in addition to the funding, we've got to have mentors who are willing. Uh, okay. Then, oh, so any question there, Jonathan? No, it's uh, in our last meeting, you, you showed us the mentor uh, issue. So, for example, uh, next year I will not participate, but uh, the next uh, year I believe uh, helping you in the Jenkins project. Mm. I know more, I will be know more about Jenkins. So, maybe next year I participate as mentor. That would be, and that would be exceptional. We've okay. we've realized that the most precious thing that we can receive in terms of people's contribution is their time, and mentoring Google Season of Docs we're expecting will take roughly the same kind of effort that is required for Google Summer of Code, and that's from four to eight hours per week, and so we want to be very clear to the mentors, this is what you're agreeing to do for a period of ten weeks. It'll be a great result that comes from it, but you need to understand that it's it's not, this is not a trivial amount of time that you're going to contribute. Yeah, I believe that. So well, here's my promise too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then reminder on the timeline, July 9, so we're six days away from the application deadline, recommended to submit on July 8, so that you're absolutely sure it made it on time. Then from July 9 to July 31, the Jenkins organization will review the, the final proposals and uh, select them. And then they'll send their selection on to Google. So at, at July 31, the selections will not be announced. They go to Google, Google reviews the proposals, and then August 16, Google will announce the selected projects. And Oleg agreed with my answer from last, from Monday, can an inexperienced technical writer be part of Google Season of Docs? Uh, inexperienced as in no Jenkins experience? Absolutely, not a problem. Inexperienced as in no technical writing experience? Yes, but it's a little more challenging. So, and he, he refined my answer, said it's focused on technical writers who are interested in working on open source. Okay, so in terms of status report on proposal reviews, proposal first proposal reviews are done. So done as of, as of July, I think I finished July 2. And so and I'll I'll visit visit the comments again to see if see how they're going, but if you have if you have submitted a proposal and haven't received feedback from me, I left at least some comment on every single proposal. So if you have a proposal and I didn't do feedback, that means I, I'm not aware of your proposal. I need to see it. Any questions there, Jonathan? Yeah, and uh, it's about my proposal. Uh, okay. You sent a comment uh, 
asking for explication about the term I use, uh, tasking force. It's not a normal term to you. So it, uh, it, uh, I make, I make mis I, I clarify to you and that, that answer makes sense um, right now. Okay. I think so. so. Yeah, I, I will double check. I haven't been through the reviews. Today has been focused on fixing a bug in in Blue Ocean and a bug in other places. So I will I will do a review just to be sure that I've seen it. But I saw your comment about yeah. it, that was explaining, and it seemed reasonable to me. Yeah, it's a it's like a, a sprint, a finding sprint to put all your efforts to do something fast and well done. Okay. Okay. So let's open. All right. So then the question on long running project. Uh, so long running project, if, after the discussion with Oleg, he confirmed that long running project is a decision from the person proposing the project. They are saying, hey, I would like to do this work over the course of about six months instead of 10 weeks. Uh, it's also asking for the mentoring organization to assign mentors for the entire six months. So yes, it, it's both. And if the project proposal does not say it is a long running project, we will assume it is not based on what we read in the timeline. Uh, then are there shortcomings for long running projects? Our, our answer was not that are specific to the nature of long running projects. Um, they are an option. They are neither advised nor discouraged. You could, if you, if it fits for your needs, we can support either type. And this one, application should specify if it wants to be long running. So the question was, can a project proposal specify alternatives? Yes, you could say, hey, here is it described as a, as a regular project, or here is it described as a long running? I would think the projects are quite different, regular versus long running. And to use your, your sprint metaphor, Jonathan, the way Oleg described it, he was assuming that a regular length progress will be re a regular length project will be uh, more intense than a long running project that it's it's a higher intensity of effort for that 10 week period than the comparable effort spread across six months. Yeah. Okay, and then the question was, we had one about, hey, what if things change like environments or we re we learn something and realize, hey, this is this needs a completely different way of approaching it. Uh, Oleg and I talked through uh, several different scenarios and he first uh, immediately acknowledged adaptation is allowed and accepted even I'd say embraced right it's it's welcomed uh, who do we inform of changes and that depends on the type of change so minor changes stay right inside the project team no one needs to be notified outside the project team, so the mentors and the writer. Significant changes should be notified to the organization admin. So in this case, I think it's Oleg and uh, Marky. Um, so that they can help if they need to. Uh, that's so, for example, if we change dramatically the delivery deliverables, what we're going to create, or when we'll have them available, or if we're adjusting mentors so if we realize hey one of the mentors is unable to help and we bring another one on or we add two more we tell the org admins because they need to record some things at google about who our mentors are any questions there jonathan um just one it's about the my proposal uh, i my proposal i i right there to migrate it 100 page inside the first 10 weeks all right so i'm afraid maybe i i can't achieve 100 page so maybe 18 80 or 
70 pages. For example, it's that the problem if I can't uh, achieve 100 pages. So I would I would significantly reduce that that estimate yeah. of the number of pages to do. It would be wonder if we could wonderful if we could do that. But typically, there is a I would guess it's on average one or two days in total of effort for a writer to make the transition of plugin documentation from from outside of the code to inside the code and that's yeah. that it's not that that's a contiguous one or two days it's rather the initial extract extract submit a preliminary pull request watch the build oh whoops this had a problem that had a problem start it again make it the repairs uh yeah, adjust I, I things. Send it to I two PRs in our experience month, and uh, each migration takes me uh, 60 hours, 16 hours, uh, because I need to uh, prepare the lab, uh, take screenshots, and uh, write the, the trans, translate the week and send it. So, uh, how, what do you think about I, I change that number for to 50? And uh, if we can achieve more, there's no problem. It's okay right. to you? Absolutely. I would even say, if you let's see, a 10-week project, if you said 40, because the, the assumption is that the writer is only working from 10 to 20 hours per week. Yeah. And if you're only working 10 to 20 hours a week, if you say 40, that's still actually quite a large number for 10 weeks. That says you're doing four a week which means you must have become much faster at the end because in the beginning, I'd assume you'll spend one or two days, eight or 16 hours per, per migration. Therefore, you'll only get two or three in the first few weeks. And then hopefully you become more fluid at it and, oh, I can do them faster. Okay, so I change it for 40. Thank you for your opinion. For your opinion. Yeah, so then we had we had um we did have an up uh, we did have the mentor meeting i had a conversation with uh me and oleg and kristen whetstone this morning went well uh we discussed uh various proposals we looked at okay are there are there questions we need to ask and felt like we were comfortable understanding things so that that was a positive we've we've got the right people now on your question jonathan they were delighted to answer the question, could a technical writer act as a mentor? Yes, if you have Jenkins knowledge. So that's, that's really encouraging. And then there was the timeline that we talked. Oh, right, and this, is, this was for, um, oh yes, we, we done this and done, met Friday, July 3, 2020. Great. Jonathan, any other questions? No, no questions. I, I guess we achieved all requirements and I love meeting with you. Great. Excellent. Well, and thank you so much for so much for your involvement and your contribution. That is so so wonderful. Delighted with the, the progress you're doing. Thank you very much. Now, Jonathan, did I spell your last name correctly? I think I got it right. Morai. Okay, say that again. How do I pronounce it? Morai? Morai. Morai. Okay, so the S is, yeah. is sounded. The S on the end actually is sounded. It's not yeah, like the actually, French where sounds... it, would be, it would be silent. It's Morais. Yeah. Portuguese, okay. it's a Portuguese. And each letter has a, his own sound. So it's a, a massive pronunciation. Oh, okay. So, so it's Portuguese then is closer to phonetic like Italian is. Yeah, exactly. Distinct from the French where I, I regularly just drop letters off the end of French words, assuming that that's no, how they pronounce it. Don't drop it ever. Nothing. Don't drop it. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. And the H after the J, is, does that, that gives it the 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 j sound the j sound yeah, the h the h was a mistyping and uh, my mother registered my name in the category uh, <laughs> there is no h but uh someone put there no one see it so forgot <laughs> it's a that, mistype 
<laughs> okay, so that so it's it, it would have typically been J O N A T A N. Yeah. Ah, very good. Okay, that's. <laughs> I thought, oh, maybe there's a secret because in in the Italian, an H after a after a let's see, an H, H has a very specific. Oh, H after the letter C will harden the C, whereas a vowel after the letter C will soften it. So yeah, the the H the after some types of letter has a sound. But oh, okay. not about no one, no sound after the J. God. All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, if no other questions, I propose we call it done. And yeah. I will post the recording of the note, and the notes are in the document. Okay. I would like to uh, say thank you to you and Maggie and uh, all of you from Jenks organization. Uh, I chose Jenkins because it's in my opinion, all the other uh, organizations in Google Docs business are not so organized uh, as you. They have no periodic meetings, have no documentation, and this, uh, with the big size and big quality, you keep uh, running. So congratulations for this uh, nice work, and uh, thank you for receiving me with uh, so much attention. Well, and thank you for joining. I'm sure it's daunting. We love having international con contributors. It's amazing, particularly you from Brazil. It makes me so proud. Yes, we've got someone from Brazil who's helping our project. That is that is a great yeah. thing. So we appreciate you very much. So thank you. All right, we'll, we, we will have office hours again on Monday and if, if we see you then, great. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Bye, Maggie. Bye, bye, bye. Mark.